All right, you sing it, and I'll show you how my voice would have made an unbelievable thing. Oh, okay, Joey. Donuts is the second and final solo album from one of the most influential hip hop producers of all time, Jay Dilla. So influential that papers have been written on it and his techniques picked apart and analyzed countless times. With a ton of mythology surrounding its creation, and it's arguably the base inspiration for the lo-fi hip hop genre. Today, we're talking about this intricately constructed beat. So what made Jay Dillow the archetype for hip hop sampling? Heralded by his peers, influencing entire genres and future generations? Let's find out. This is a series where we take a closer look at some of the coolest sampling techniques we've come across while making our sample breakdowns, dive deeper into the historical context surrounding them, and show you how you can use these techniques to expand your own sampling toolkit. James Dewitt Yancey, better known as Jay Dilla, was born in Detroit, Michigan. His mother, Maureen Ma Dukes Yancey, was a former opera singer. His father, Beverly Dewitt Yancey, was a jazz bassist. His mother would go on to say that Dilla had perfect pitch and harmony at only a couple of months old, mimicking intricate sounds from songs perfectly. Early on, Jay Dilla would form the rap group Slum Village with his high school friends. Gaining a reputation for his funky bass lines, offbeat drums, innovative sampling techniques, and complex jazzy harmonics. While others would sample cool parts they liked, Dilla would manipulate his samples to do what he wanted them to do, almost like he could speak through them. Like in the Slum Village track, where he changes the word to sound more like or in this beat, where he rearranges the ending of the Grease soundtrack. or when he layered a six count sample over a four count beat and made two different time signatures work together somehow. Or this beat, where he took the bass line from, well, you get the point. To his peers, this was like witchcraft. Like Jimi Hendrix's guitar was his instrument, the sampler and the records were Dilla's. His production instrument of choice was the MPC 3000, which he would use to craft timeless classics for a lot of artists, like A Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul, Erica Badu, Common, The Roots, just to name a few. Which brings us to Donuts. Donuts is a beat tape and instrumental album unlike any other. It was so special because it was a complete departure from its previous styles. It was like he had invented something completely new. The album was released on the anniversary of Dilla's birthday, February 7, 2006. Unfortunately, he would pass away three days later. The album was being worked on by Jay Dilla while battling a blood disease and a disease called lupus. Finishing up the album from his hospital bed, it's definitely his most well-known project. We'd like to think it's because of how musically groundbreaking it was. However, a large part of his popularity has to do with the story surrounding it, how he made it from his deathbed, and how these songs were the last messages to his loved ones. How truthful that story is, is up for debate. But the fact remains, he did speak through his music, and he did work on these tracks while battling the diseases that would ultimately take his life. In his last interview that Jay Dilla granted to Scratch Magazine in November of 2005, he would briefly speak on the album. It's just a compilation of the stuff I thought was a little too much for the MCs. That's basically what it is, you know? Me flipping records that people really don't know how to rap on, but want to rap on. There's a bunch of that. And one of the most unique beats on the album, and perhaps one of the most impressive beats on the album from a sampling perspective, is Donut's 18th track, Don't Cry. Let's take a closer look. Dilla is essentially deconstructing the record with surgical precision at different points along the entire original composition. Instead of looking at a certain loop or section of the record, he's zooming out and looking at the entire record as a canvas. In the 
same way a painter spends time crafting their palette of colors to paint with, Dilla extracts portions of the sample along the entire timeline to piece back together like a puzzle. It's this puzzle method that makes this track so unique. The other special part about this track is how Dilla manipulates the chops to form his own tempo and groove. The sample is slower than Dilla's final track. Which means that normally, if you picked anything other than eighth notes, your chops would sound out of sync since all the drums would be hitting too late. But because he does eighth note chops, he's forcing the sample to adhere to his new speed. So the kick and snare now hit where they're supposed to. And the added bonus to this is that everything after each kick and snare hits just a little bit late. By doing this and not resorting to quarter note chops, he's more able to finely tune the groove and tempo. Also, by focusing on eighth note chops, he's able to make the puzzle pieces connect quicker, creating intrigue as the chops and textures jump in pitch and melody between one another. Now that we have the blueprint, let's put it to use in our own beats. All right, so to recreate this technique, we're gonna come into Tracklib, we're gonna go over to Tracks, and to narrow this down, we have filters up here. I'm just gonna actually use the like mid 60s to late 70s. I'm also gonna narrow it down by genre, so I'm gonna use the R&B and soul genre as well. It'll filter out the entire library and catalog on Tracklib, and now I'm able to browse each track. And one cool thing we can do now on Tracklib is change the pitch. Now, to accomplish the Dilla technique, we're not so much looking for something that inspires us in terms of like a section or a four bar loop. We need to look more for textures. We're looking for kick, drum hits, snare hits, strings that might sound like pads, small guitar lines, maybe a lyric or two. So I've actually found a track that I wanna use already. It's by the fabulous Waller family. I'm gonna download this track and import it into my DAW. So let's listen to the entire track and isolate what we want. So immediately I heard a couple different things, right? I heard a kind of bell chime sound within here. That itself is a pretty cool sound. And then the word baby. Baby, baby, I know. Baby. So with the word baby, you get that piano hit in the back. Baby, 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 I know. You've been messing around. When the vocal is held out this long, it's basically acting like a synth at that point because you can take the beginning of the vocal chop or you can take a section within that held note because now it's going to sound like a synth, right? So now you have a sound that isn't necessarily a word. It's not a lyric. It's just a sustained note that you can utilize. That's essentially what we're talking about when we're talking about textures. So these are the types of things that you start listening for in the record. And I'll show you guys how to chop it up so that you can do the eighth note sequence so that things start making a little bit more sense as you're putting them together. So let's just take this one section right here. You can do this uh, with any DAW, but essentially I would take this into somewhere where I could slice up the samples with my controller, right? I can trigger it from my pad or I can just trigger it from a MIDI note, but I use the, the Ableton push. There's the actual chop that I want, right? Here it is in the actual track, and then here it is me trying to slice it up. Most producers, when they chop up, you would do a quarter note chop. So you would count quarter notes in your head. Two, three, four, right? You have one, two, three, four, right? Essentially, you can just play those four chops in order, or you can rearrange those chops. But what Dilla did is that this chop would actually move to the left here. So he, he would have eighth note chops. So now I have twice as many things to hit in the melody. So he would do something like this. You can jump from this section of the record at 53 seconds over to this part of the record at 57 seconds if that's if that's how it sounds good to you in your in your head right and that's essentially what you do you're you're basically looking for the chops that you want now i'm going to go through the entire record and do what you just saw there all right so now that i have these chops i'm actually just gonna go ahead and try and figure out how to piece them together now one thing i like to do i'll just drag in like a a drum loop now this is just to generate ideas because i have a backing track to actually go to so let's see what we come up with here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to my Ableton push. And essentially what I'm doing is just triggering different 
elements and I can show you guys how it gets printed to MIDI afterwards, but For this part really all I do is play throughout the chop see if I can find like a four bar loop and then from there I just let my imagination take over As I'm repeating things that might not make sense, there's certain parts of those elements that I like that I'm trying to keep. So I'm trying to remember those parts and then take out the one chop that I don't like. All right, I think I, I kind of like that. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go with that for now. And I just created a, a two bar section here. Uh, you know, one part was a little bit repetitive and then the second part was a different section that I repeated. Dilla kind of evolved his track. That's essentially how he was doing it, right? He found one section that worked really well together and then figured out how to uh, meld that into the second section. So let's take a look at the chops I have here. So you can see all this is doing is basically triggering these slices that you see down here in my DAW. So you could actually just come in here in MIDI and play around. You can use a keyboard for this. You don't necessarily need a push controller or an MPC or anything like that. You can do this with any software as well. That second chop right here. That vocal choir that comes in, I don't like that part. So here you can literally just take the MIDI and move it around, right? You can just play around with it. That's the beauty of MIDI now is I can go here and change that chop to whatever I want. Actually, that sounds better than the, the chop that was there before. Essentially, you can put these puzzle pieces together in any way, shape or form. This is how I chose to do them. And this is how I recreated the, the Dilla technique. Then you see the real. 